Hi everyone, today we're gonna to be talking about the importance of protecting your investment. All right, so this is a topic that isn't really talked about much, at least from, from what I can tell in the landscape of finance and investment, you know, topics that are covered, but it's an extremely important topic. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. We are gonna be joined by Andre Robb from Will and Tomorrow. So before I introduce him, we just want to welcome the presence of the Lord here. Lord, we thank you for this day and everything that it has brought. Thank you, Lord, that we're able to learn and grow as investors. Bless this community. In your name we pray. Amen. Right. So I have the great pleasure of being joined by, you know, uh, someone who I am happy to say shares we have a few things in common, <laughs> I'll just say it that way. So um, Will and Tomorrow is founded by Andre Robb. He's a social policy specialist turned entrepreneur with a leaning towards socially minded ventures. Andre previously launched Driving Change Academy Limited. It was a partner in Icon Media and still runs Brata Box and Company. He has benefited from generous contributions of business support programs from the, from the JBDC and the U.S. State Department's Young Leaders of the Americas initiative and is currently a First Angels Investment ready, Readiness Program participant. And it's just, you know, he's someone that you definitely want to follow on Twitter. Um, you know, great, great insight, great conversations we have from time to time. So please allow me to please welcome, you know, Andre Rob. How are you doing, Andre? <laughs> uh, you're on you're on mute. That's right. I'm on mute. Uh, yeah. I'm good. Are you hearing me now? Yes, hearing you, hearing you clearly. Great, great. Yeah, yeah. So thank you for having me. I'm very excited to be able to share with you and whomever joins us online or we'll see this afterwards. Yeah. Uh, about this topic. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, you know, where do we start? Do you want to speak a little bit about, you know, what you do and, you know, um, yeah, let's, let's maybe set, set the scope. Like what was the value of, you know, this, this concept, um, you know, yeah. before we start. Okay. Um, so talking about wills is not the, um, it's not like a, a party move to get me yeah. a popular person in the room, right? Um, because it, it's, it's surrounded by a lot of uncertainty and it's related to a part of human existence that we don't like to talk about, right? And that's dying. Um, but given that it's such a real part of life and it's something that a lot of us either have near-death experiences or we have family members and loved ones, um, yeah. This idea of being ready for it um, in more ways than one is, 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 is part of the reason why Will and Tomorrow is our own, part of the reason why I'm working on it. Um, what Will and Tomorrow is, is really a platform, something that's online. It has a real life component as well, because once you've done the online bits, there is um, physical interaction with your information that leads to the development of a, of a document couple pages okay. depending on who you are that contains your instructions for what happens with your estate and that's the word that's used to cover all the things that are legally yours and that you can pass on from you to somebody else so will and tomorrow is, is basically that you create a platform allows you to put in your information and then we go through a couple steps and at the end of it you have a document that can be relied upon to tell people what to do with what you own when you're no longer here to do that yourself. Yeah. And so this is something that we recommend every investor look into, right? This is not something that based on, you know, how much you're earning or, or what you consider to be a great amount of assets. This is needed for everyone pretty much. So, you know, we just, we just wanted to kind of set that before we go into the presentation, because just in case, you know, you you don't stay with us this whole time today. We don't want you to miss the importance of what we're going to be presenting here today. All right. All right, Thank you for having me. So, 
Today we're talking about protecting your investment, writing a will with Will and Tomorrow. And um, even though this is my business, right, and of course I want as many users as possible, it's more important for you to think about the importance of writing a will and decide that it's something that you want to do for yourself than necessarily writing it with Will and Tomorrow. Um, so, so that's the first thing. I think this information that we're sharing, while it's going to be specific to our platform, we, which will also introduce it to the idea of thinking about creating a will, making sure that you have what is required to get one done. And if you decide to go the route of using Will and Tomorrow, awesome. I'm going to be happy. If you decide that a better route is for you to go with an alternative, then if you, at the end of the day, at the end of this presentation, have been convinced of the importance of creating a will, then Jermaine and I will be happy as well. Yes, um, but we definitely encourage that you use the, the services of Will and Tomorrow. Just yeah, so. and, and hopefully we'll make a case <laughs> as to why that's a good idea, right? Yeah. So, 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 so fingers crossed, I'll make a good case as to, yeah, it's a good idea to use Will and Tomorrow. All right, so uh, here we go. Yeah, the slide has changed, yes. So uh, I'd like to let people know what we're talking about today. There are about seven, seven categories. We're going to talk about creating an account with Will and Tomorrow, preparing to write your will, completing the steps to make your will, paying for your will, making your will legally binding. Then we talk about uh, an, an, a service area of Will and Tomorrow called Will and Tomorrow for Business. And then if there are any questions, um, Jeremy and I will, will, will engage you on that. All right. So first and foremost, if you go to www.willandtomorrow.com, you should see something looking like this. As of right now, that's what it looks like. And it's really this idea of writing your will right now. And the fact that we're putting this online means that it is possible to write your will right now, as long as you have thought about the various things that go into writing your will, which we'll talk about later. But uh, essentially, we're encouraging you, if you're interested, that you start here to create your, account, your own account. And creating an account is how you're able to go through the, the next steps. You're able to do the work of creating a document so that we can get you a legally binding um, document at the end of the day. So you land at our homepage, you see this information, you scroll, you read about the various um, target audiences that we are um, looking to, to talk to, um, parents of minor children, those who are retired or pre-retired, um, young professionals who are starting out in their careers, and people who are in these high-risk careers. They are among the key people that we're talking to, all right? Um, and then once you click on register, it's going to take you through a series of qualifying questions because making a will is something that is specific to where you're living. And as a platform that's recently started, less than a year now, we are starting in Jamaica. So we ask you a couple of questions to kind of identify if you fit our target audience. Do you live in Jamaica? Are most of your assets in Jamaica? Are you over the age of 18? Questions like these. Once you answer appropriately, it will prompt you to sign up, which is what you're seeing here. And signing up is just like creating any other account. Um, you choose the email address that you want to have associated with your Will and Tomorrow account, put in your name and um, password, and you're good to go. And that's what creating the account is. Now, creating the account will get you to a dashboard, which you'll see later. But it's also very important to know that going to willandtomorrow.com right now to create an account and say you're going to start to write a will is only going to take you 30 minutes or less or, or less than an hour if you're prepared to write the will. So we do encourage you to take a step back and look at some of the other things that we have on our website that allows you to be ready to actually go onto the app to create your will. So preparing to write your will is as, um, as straightforward as knowing what to include in your document. So I'm zooming in here to kind of show you what the will prep list looks like. 
and this is available on our website for anybody to download. Um, it's on our it's on our website. It's actually at the page willandtomorrow.com slash prep list. Yeah. So this prep list is, is going to ask you to think about the components of um, of your will that you have to have answers for. So for instance, you need to know who you're going to ask to be your executors. You need to know, um, you know, you're asking two people that you trust. It could be a partner or a spouse. It could be an adult child. It could be a parent. It could be a longtime friend. It could be a colleague at work that you trust. But you need to identify two people and ask them if they are interested and willing to be your executors. Your executors are the people who are tasked with the legal responsibility of honoring what is in, included in your will and doing the, you know, the work, because there is going to be some amount of work involved in getting that done. So by making a note of it, making no, note of their address and their occupation, um, you are getting ready to be able to just translate it from this prep list to the actual application. All right. Uh, I don't want to scroll some more. Okay. If you have children who are younger than 18 years, uh, you want to name guardians for them other than the other parent then you're also allowed to write in two names and ask these people if they're interested in being your child's guardian, if needed. And then the prep list talks about um, beneficiaries, yeah? So who are the people that you are going to assign one or more of your assets to from your estate? Uh, are these going to be your parents, your siblings, your children, your church? your youth group, um, the NGO that you, you, you like and support, um, the political party that you have a close relationship with? Is it going to be um, anybody who you want to leave anything to? Is it going to be your students that you teach? You want to leave them your collection of books? The ideas and the possibilities for who your beneficiaries are is as wide as your imagination can, can, can go. Um, and this is where you kind of just start to think about who these people are, make a note of them, because you're going to input that information in the, um, in the document. So that's page one. We've tried to make it as simple as possible. And then now you need to list what are the things that are part of your estate? What are the assets that you're going to include? For a lot of us, those are going to be the bank account that we have in Jamaican dollars, the one that we have in US dollars or Canadian or pound, the investment account that we have at our brokerage house. Um, it's going to be the house that we've been working so hard to acquire and we have it now, it's in our name. It's gonna be the car that we've, we've had uh, and whatever else you've been amassing, it's going to be your equity in a business. Whatever it is that you own, you have a title to, or it is, it is uh, materially yours, you know? Uh, nobody is going to argue that this is yours, this is my watch. If I wanted my will to be as granular as saying I'm leaving my Apple Watch to my um, my young cousin because they're a techie, you know, I could do that and it would it would it would, it would be honored. Um, but some people aren't as granular; they're more like high level. I'm leaving 50% of my residuary estate, which is the word that um, that captures everything that hasn't been specifically assigned, is a part of your residuary estate. So it depends on the level of detail that you want. Our application does allow for some amount of detail. Um, and you just start thinking about your assets here. I'll tell you this. A lot of people tend to say that they didn't know they had so many things that were part of their estate until they are sitting down to create their will or creating this, um, going through this prep list. All right? And then this is the part of it that, that really tells people about who people are. You know, are you interested in writing down your idea for your final arrangements? You know, do you think it's too morbid to even say, hey, I want to be cremated. I want my, um, I want this song to be at my memorial service or anything like that. There are people who have no problem doing that. And there are people who actually see it as an opportunity to take the guesswork away from their family members and allow them to um, make a note of it here. So those are the major buckets that, uh, of information that are, 
that are going to be covered by our um, platform. And by thinking about it one time, sitting down, printing this out or typing it out on your iPad or your laptop, because this is an editable PDF that's available on our website, then you get to start, you get to you get your, your motor running. And when you go into the application, you actually have an easier time. So that's the prep list. And that's what cover, that's what we cover in preparing to write your will. Now let me zoom back out. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Boom. Um, the other part of preparing to write your will is by going to our resources page on our website and seeing the articles that we have there and reading a few of them. If this is your first time thinking about making a will, you haven't heard about Will and Tamar from before or before this, you are going to want to know a bit more. I understand the trust factor that's a part of going to an online service and telling them that, hey, give me this document that you say is very important for my estate planning and for protecting my investment. You do want to know if we know what we're talking about. So go to a resources page and you should see a few articles, more to come, more other kinds of media to come um, that talk about estate planning and thinking about how it is that we can support the community as they have questions about these things. All right. Um, and I think that's um, what we have to share about preparing to write the will. So you've created the account in, 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 in the second part of our presentation. You've taken a step back and you've thought about what you're going to input when you go online to write and now you're actually back at your computer writing and completing the will making steps. Now you're going to see a dashboard that looks something like this. Um, it will say hello Jermaine and um, the first thing we'll ask you to do is to create your will and if you click on that it will take you to another page that is broken up according to steps. So there are seven steps and they are basically grouping of questions that once you answer them, it populates our um, super template that we use to give you as your will. So we ask you questions about you, about your family and who you're going to assign guardianship for, about your executors, about the gifts that you want to, to leave. You're not seeing that here, but the gifts that you want to leave, it asks you about your estate, it asks you about your um, final preparations, all right? Um, yeah. So I think right here I wanted to, oh, oh no, I'm not able to. But what I wanted to do was to point out that the steps are very straightforward. We've thought a lot about grouping the questions so they make sense and so that the flow is pretty good. And this is where we're saying, if you've prepared to write your will and you come onto our website, come onto the application part, this part here, and you're just like, you know, typing in your information accurately, then this is what we mean by it can take you less than 30 minutes. The average person is married, has a few children, has these many assets, and inputting that information, it's not about doing it in the shortest possible time. It's about doing it in a way that doesn't feel onerous or cumbersome. It's about doing it in a way that feels like, doesn't make it feel like a chore. And I think um, the steps that we've we've used to break down the will making process, it does that. So that's this is a core of will and tomorrow. You providing us with the relevant information, and then that now becoming the um, the the inputs for the document. So you've gone through the will making process. Now will and tomorrow is a business, so you do have to pay for your will in order for us to get your inputted material and turn that into uh, an output, you know, a document that makes sense. Um, so you're prompted to pay for your will and there are two ways that you can do that. The first is if you're doing a prepayment. So for instance, you are overseas, like a, an adult child overseas and you want to um, prepare, get, you know, you really want your parents to make their wills and they can use the computer themselves, yeah? Or you may want a phone-in will where you're going to pay a little bit more than the $8,977 that you're seeing here for someone to call this person that you're paying for and have them go through the questions on the phone and typing the information. Then for those two situations, you are paying for the will up front, you're paying for it for somebody else, 
then you're able to use a checkout link and um, that link will allow you to enter your credit card information and pay for the will online. All of our credit card processing is done by Stripe and Stripe has a reputation for being um, you know, really good in terms of protecting the user's information. We don't get it, it's processed by this well reputed um, international credit card processing company. So that's option one. Then, uh, so for this option, we are able to use discount codes and I did include one for those who are here today and we'll also revert to this after, but apparently I put it in there um, before. So I'll get back to that. Now, the other way to pay for your will is you've gone through the will making steps because if you remember, when we showed you creating the account, it takes you straight to the dashboard, it takes you straight to the steps. And we're not asking you for payments until after you've, um, you've answered the questions and inputted your information. And so you're gonna get this prompt that comes up to pay now and when you click on it you're either paying for one will now or maybe you're paying for two wills at the same time to get a discount on the second one and um you you choose that and then you'll see this this credit card information pop up come up and you're able to input the information to to pay from your card as well and that's what is required to pay for your will i did mention that there are two separate options um, the paying for the online will and paying for a phone in will. The phone in will is a little bit more expensive. I believe it's $11,397. Um, and that's because there's a human person going through the questions with maybe an older person who isn't as comfortable on the computer. So, um, so those are the options and both of them you can pay for online. All right, so what happens after you've submitted your will, you've paid for it? we get a notification that there's a will to be reviewed and to get ready for the customer to get back. And that part of the process for us um, involves literally reading the answers. We are able to spot if, you know, something was inputted in the wrong field. Um, the, the attorney that will look at it is able to say, okay, this person has indicated a number of assets that aren't as straightforward, so maybe we need to get them on the phone to, to let them know that we suggest more specialized attention. But so far, a lot of Jamaicans are going to fall into the category of people who just the attorney review and our internal review as experts um, will be sufficient to get you back a document that is that does what it's supposed to do and that is valid, right? So that's part of the process that happens. And then the big part of it is that you get the, the, the document itself, right? Now, wills in Jamaica have to be physical. There's no such thing as an online will or an e-will, not yet. Um, so we have the option of sending you out, mailing you out a folder that you're seeing here. It will have papers in it, and the paper will have an intro sheet like what you have there, and then it will also have the pages for your will. Um, and this is one of the more important pages in the will where you have to get this done right in order for there to be no issues when you are, you know, your will is now ready to be administered. So this signatory page is where you sign, you write in some details, what's the date that you're signing, um, who are your witnesses, and they also sign and include their information as well. Um, on this page, well, on the oversheet, we tell you, you know, get your witnesses together and have you all do this at the same time because that's what um, the law requires. All right. Um, and basically, I would have just run through the way that our platform works for individuals who want to create a will on willandtomorrow.com. Now, we also understand that there might be groups of individuals and one place that we can readily find a group of individuals is by going to where they work. Um, so we came up with Will and Tomorrow for Business, which, which has its own page on the website that you can go through and you can see what we mean by having a group, a group, um, a group, a group, a group account, not a group account, but like a group package, right, for, um, for making a few wills on Will and Tomorrow, as many as are in the group. 
So as part of this, it's you get a discount. So instead of it being, you know, you're buying one, you're buying a lot. So each person gets their discount. Each person gets to create their will in the same way that an individual would because it's your private information and the group has no reason to have access to that. So you're still having this um, this one-on-one -on -one interaction with Will and Tomorrow, but instead of paying the full retail price, you are getting access to the group rate. Um, with the group rate, you also have a session similar to this where we have one of our team members, um, more than likely the attorney, who will come on and do a little bit more of a, you know, estate planning 101, um, what are wills, and kind of like allow people to ask some questions. We also take you through the platform like what we did a while ago um, as part of that package. Uh, the only thing is that we need for there to be at least seven people for it to work out for us to offer the kind of discount that we have offered here. Um, so yeah, so that's what Will and Tomorrow for Business is. And it's essentially just a group package for getting access to the platform to create your will. Okay. And I believe in under 30 minutes, we have gone through the high level, you know, like if my competitors are watching, it's not a bad thing. They don't know the secret sauce. Um, this is what you see as our customers um, as to what will and tomorrow is. So yeah, Jeremy, tell me, how did I do? Great, that was, that was good, excellent actually. So we do have a couple of questions from, from, from the audience. I have some questions as well but I'll share mine afterwards. So oh. hopefully you guys don't mind, I'll share the questions in reverse order. So Dayan is asking, what if you acquire assets after writing the will? Do you have to keep updating the will? And then I guess I would add to that question saying, is there an additional cost to make revisions to the will? I love that question because I always forget it as a, as a part of what makes will and tomorrow a really great option for creating a will now. So because you're inputting your information and we're doing this digital product, you're creating this digital, you're having this digital experience, a lot of the costs are contained. So one, you create an account with Will and Tomorrow and for the first year, up to 365 days after you've paid for your will, you can make any changes by going into your account, updating that section, prompting us that you have made an update and then your document is updated. And that is done at no additional cost in the first year. We're going to be announcing before the anniversary of our first customer, what will be the subscription for having access to our platform and being able to make changes in subsequent years after your first year um, is, has, has, has elapsed. That okay. is going to be some, you know, some nominal amount, maybe in the 10 to $15 range, US dollar range, just so that it makes sense for us to keep your data long term, right? Yeah. Uh, so that's the subscription for that. No, that's the cost and what what happens if you decide to make a change. No, in terms of whether or not you want to or you need to, is really dependent on who you are and your stage of life. If you're an unmarried individual and you do get married one day and you've created a will before you've gotten married, then at the point at which you are married the will that you created has become um, nullified by the laws of the land. So that will that you created when you were a single person, when you die, it would be as if you never made a will because your will has to be, once you're married, you have to create a new will. And that's just, that's just that, that's just facts. Yeah. So you, we, we know that that is real and that a lot of our customers may not want to say, okay, I'll just wait and spend the money after we're married. Um, there's no guarantees. And that's part of, part of the reason why it's really cool that we have something that's as easy to do as will and tomorrow, because you're yeah. able to make a decision now, and there are no penalties really for changing it after, for having a situation change. So that's one okay. part of the answer. The other part is that you do want to update your will on a basis that works for you. Some people do it every two years, some people's lives are so moving so rapidly that they have to do it every year. But the international advice is two to five years. Over that, that time frame, your estate might look a little different. Your relationships might look a little different. And you may want to go in and um, make changes to your way. Okay, cool. Makes sense. So 
had another question from Dayan. Who keeps the copies of the will? Right. So it's, it's up to you. There is a service that we're going to be launching in September where you, after you've printed and signed on, paper, on the paper, your you know, gotten your will signed so now it's legally valid. And that's all you require to have a legally valid will. Not for it to be signed by a JP, not for it to be prepared and signed by a lawyer, not for it to be done um, in open court or anything like that. It's for the person who is a testator to make a note on the, the page. And this the page that you get your witnesses to sign is the only page that you that you that you have to show them. They're not obligated to see who you're leaving that, anything. That to. was one of my questions. Oh, okay, okay. So I'm jumping the gun. So I'll get back to that. But essentially, once you prepare the document and it's signed, um, you right now all of our customers are advised to keep your will safe. Put it up with mm -hmm. your passport and your birth certificates and make sure that people know where it is and make sure that your family knows that you've created a will and your executors know that you've created a will. You might not give them a copy because um, you know they might just be you know not as close to you. So you keep your will, you let people know where it is and um, they can access it when the time is right. Now the service that we we'll launch in September is where you're able to return to us a copy of the signed document and we file it for you at the Registrar General's Department. They have a service that allows you to file your will um, which is just an additional level of protection to say that this was the document that was created by Andre Rob um, so that there is no issue if I ever yeah. find myself in a position where people might just be crazy, you know, when I die. So, so, so next question, right? What if I don't want people to know where the will is so that they don't look at it before... Ah, well, that's a very interesting question. I mean, some people keep it in a safe. Some mm. people keep it in a safe if you have access to that. Um, some people put it to the, give it to the bank because banks have safes and tell their executors or make an arrangement to say that this person is an executive and they have access to come to the bank and ask for it. Okay. Are, yeah, because that to me sounds safe, all right? Because if I have a will in my drawer and I say it's in my top drawer, then somebody who's curious can go and open that anytime. Like yeah, I don't, I don't can. want that. They certainly can. So people have to really think about where they want to keep their keep their wills. Um, mm -hmm. and, and and for right now, we can only suggest a couple of things, and they kind of work with you to see, you know, where where you think might be best for you. Okay. Okay. All right. Next one from Kim. What assurance? Uh, does she have that the details that she has entered for a will is not shared with anyone else? And you probably would want to answer this by saying, based on, I guess, well, yeah, go ahead. I, I think it's it's very clear. Okay, all right, Kim. I I I I also need to do a better job of. I I I do expect certain questions, and I do have. Mm -hmm. I guess no, like, she, I, she might have joined just a few minutes ago, so it, oh, no, it's not this, right? yeah. No, but I'm so. just saying that you know, data protection and making sure that people putting in um, certain information they feel like this is somewhere where they can actually do that. So, okay. I, mean, I mean, people, there are a couple of things whenever you're creating a, 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 a tech enabled product, you have um, the option of making sure that the website is protected, you know. Um, little things like that by making sure it is like HTTPS protected and then making sure that your choices for your servers and your rules around um, data storage actually conform to best practices for that. No, that's something okay. that we've had to do and that we can only see ourselves doing better at as we get better, as we get older. So I'd say okay. one, we've, we've, we, we've, we know that people are entering information that they don't want to become public um, without their knowledge or unless they do it, unless they decide to make it public. So because we know that, we've taken care to protect the data. Another thing is it's a very small team of us currently. And even when the team grows by God's grace and we have a lot more people working on it, those who have access to people's information is going to be governed by internal rules as to you know what makes sense. How do we keep as few eyes as possible on the information how do we make sure that people can trust us? So we've thought about it, um, Kim, 
And I would say that we've been guided by what is it that people who have to deal with personal information are doing um, in their spaces and we've modeled those best practices. Another thing is that we only ask for information that is needed to be included in your will. So for instance, when you are telling us about your estate, we aren't asking for the value of your house. We aren't asking for the bank account number for their bank accounts that you're going to list. You're, you're telling us which bank, which branch, what bank account type, because that will give your executors enough information to be able to go and get access to what is actually yours. But you don't need to tell us the account number because that is not useful information to be included in the document. So everything that you've inputted is going to be included in the document in some way, shape, or form. You may be asked the date of birth for your spouse, and that's not reflected in the document because the date of birth of your spouse is something that also confirms that this person is of age. Um, so little things like that, but everything that is um, asked for is needed for your document, and we don't ask for more than, that, than, than what is needed. Okay, cool. All right, next question. Um, if you are married, can you leave your assets to your children or will it automatically go to your spouse? So the laws of intestacy will, will have proportions that say your spouse gets the majority of what you, um, what you own when you're married. Um, and it's only by making a will that you're actually able to, to adjust what the default is. So. Okay. Um, so, so the will will supersede the law? Correct, correct. Okay. The law is what is, is there if you don't have a will. So the default is that everybody who dies, they fall under this big law of intestacy. But if you have a will, then you're not intestate because you have this will that was prepared to say, these are my wishes as opposed to the default rules that, they, you know, that have been prescribed for everybody. And the default rules does favor spouses over children okay okay all right so uh let me see this question by jess is there a transfer tax for placing bank accounts investments in the will in putting them in the will there's well there's no so my interpretation of this question is let me read it is there a transfer tax for placing the bank accounts, investment accounts? You know, so so my 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 understanding of the question is at the point that it's being transferred to the person who is going to be the beneficiary, is there a cost that they would have to pay before they receive it? There uh, are just let me know if that's how you you intended it to be asked. Okay, but so there are some assets yeah. that are subject to transfer tax. I do not have the requisite training to let know all of them right now. I don't know that bank accounts or certain investment accounts are included in those assets that are subject to transfer tax. And that's something that you could, you know, get, we, we could probably create an article as to what are the assets in Jamaica yeah. that are subject to transfer tax. Because I feel as though that's useful information. So thank you. Yeah, for definitely. That. Definitely. Um, thank you for that. We, we shy away from giving specific legal advice because we tell people that, you know, we're not trying to, be your legal advisor in, in, in certain moments. We're yeah. providing this framework because we are capable of doing it. It's, it's important for more people to have access to it. But um, a, lot of, a lot of time people may have some specific questions and we're like, you know, um, you're delving into the, into the part that we, we, we don't want to be on the hook for. So if you want, yeah. put you on to our legal person and you're talking to them as a private client, and not as well and tomorrow giving you that advice. And that's just because oh. of the structure of things um, currently. Okay, okay. All right, next question is, is there a section that asks, asks questions to determine if you really need to write a will? And, and I think I'd, well, I'd, I would have responded to her to say, well, everybody needs a will, right? So it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's not to add a question as to whether or not you need it. Once you have assets and more than one potential beneficiary, mm -hmm. then a will will help in determining who gets what. Because there is this kind of expectation sometimes that your your loved ones will just lovingly agree as to how things will be <laughs> will be allocated when that's not the case. Because persons may have different expectations, right? 
Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. But you know how I want to think about this question as well is um, with the cost that it, it takes to create a will and will and tomorrow, is that amount, um, are, you, are you going to find value in spending that to create your will right now? I think that thinking about that question, like, you know, when you spend the $8,977 or if you pay for it using the coupon code and you spend 7000 odd, are you going to feel like what you get is, is a good spend? We do want people to use our platform uh, only if they feel as though this is something that's a good spend for them. So I agree that once you're over 18 and that's the age at which you are um, capable of making a will, once you have um, at least one bank account, uh, maybe you have somebody that you care for. And if you don't specify that, you know, you want what is here to go to this person, then they might not readily get it. Yeah. Then that's at least the bare minimum that I say um, is the consideration for, for making a will. Yeah. Uh, and I also want to say to people that there are, other, there are alternatives out there. The alternatives of going directly to attorneys is going to be more expensive than will and tomorrow. And the alternative of getting a will form from the book station is going to be less expensive than will and tomorrow. There are pros and cons for each, yeah? So we fit in that space where our wills are robust. You get clauses that speak to, you know, your residuary clause is well-structured. The clause about the guardianship is well-structured. The clauses about your final arrangements. All of these are well-written clauses. You don't get that level of detail in your will form. Um, yeah. And you don't pay for the private one-on-one -on -one interaction with an attorney. So it depends on who the client is. This is where, this is why, this is why I'm choosing to answer the question. Depends on if you are ready to write a will, if you are convinced that the cost of doing it with Will and Tomorrow or going with an alternative is worth the peace of mind that having a will gives you, then that's going to be the thing that helps you to determine if you really need a will. The yeah. determining questions are just to make sure that you are based in Jamaica and you're writing a will that's going to be um, executed in Jamaica because we don't want you to be watching this from you know, I don't know where else, from China, and uh, you live there and you're creating a will and will and tomorrow, and then you're going to see everything is specific to Jamaican law. That that wouldn't be a good use of your, um, of your yeah. time, your resources. So we have some, I, I believe we've answered the question. Um, well, Jess was pretty much saying it's not so much about the cost of the will for her, it's just whether or not, depending on your, you know, unique situation, if it is that it 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 would be I guess needed, mm. as as we would have said before. Just I think everyone once you once you think you have anything of value and yeah. multiple potential beneficiaries, I think a will is needed to clarify because, I, I mean, trust me, we may just assume that these persons who who we leave behind will will always be in a state where they'll just agree in an amicable way how things will be done i've seen where i mean sometimes especially if there's not the best relationship between whether whether brother and sister or auntie and uncle or it, you just never know it's best not to leave it to chance right, right. so that's that's our our recommendation in and, in that and, regard and i'm glad you said that because we aren't coming from the in our in our storytelling We've been deliberate not to come from the scare perspective, but to talk about like peace of mind, convenience, affordability, because I feel as though um, we do want people to make decisions about making a will um, out of a place of like abundance and not necessarily deficit. Yeah. So, but the, but the, 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 the scary um, stories are all around, um, Jermaine, about just what you could be avoiding by creating a will is there are examples of a lot of things that have gone wrong um, where wills don't exist and families get into a lot of challenges. Yeah, or, or I mean, details of the wills aren't properly stated and it causes issues. Yeah, so we, 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 won't, we won't go there. Um, so, you know, some, some good feedback for you, Andre. Um, Stephen says the site is impressive. Very, very good job. 
he he has shared the link you know explanation was good site is clean pricing is decent and he loves the services to come you kim dayan and jess well are saying thank you for your responses and um well can you comment on well can a will be be contested it wasn't posed as a question but it's it's being talked about in the chat so i'll just yes. ask you and, and that's that's exactly true um wills can be contested irrespective of who makes them and that's what what we like to remind people um it's not who makes a will whether or not you've written it on a piece of paper and had it witnessed and that can be a will as well or you made it on will and tomorrow or you made it with your attorney i mean there is a there are levels of protection with each of those right um but a will can be contested if someone who has um some sort of a claim to your estate um says that hey i want to you know get more or get something yeah. that has not been left to me but, and that's but just that bear in mind that the contest doesn't mean that they'll be granted what they're 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 asking right it just means that they 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 probably feel like they are owed more or something should have been done differently and they want to contest it doesn't mean that they necessarily be necessarily be granted what they're asking for right right correct correct because it's going yeah. to be up to a judge to determine what's in the best interest of this person's estate and their wishes. yeah yeah all right cool so i think i've covered all the questions from the chat let me get through to mine quickly uh well the first question is do 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 the executors have to be aware like can i assign somebody that role without telling them so here's the thing you know you're really asking somebody to take up their time after you've passed to see to it that what you've listed here as your wishes are carried out executors can refuse to do the job so they can change their mind you know, um, when it comes for your will to be um, administered and it's before the court and the judge has to say, okay, it's a like a legal document. It was signed in a way that looks like it was done well. What is written here is clear and coherent and nothing conflicts a previously said thing. And um, and yeah, this is actually, this was actually done by the person who um, said that they did it. And then they say, okay, go ahead and get no you the executor has access to their assets the bank accounts you know you can go and get that money get those things and this distribute it according to the will you don't want to um give somebody this big job and then they don't want to do it especially if you end up um giving two people the job and then the two of them say they don't want to do it and the reason you ask yeah. to at least two executors is you know any card can play somebody may pass before you and you didn't get to update your will and then you pass so there's only one person that is actually alive and able to do yeah. it it does work. So you do want to ask for before. It's it's decent and it's um it makes sense, you know. Yeah, yeah, um, it does. It does. Is there a uh, next question? Is let's say that um you're married, you have children, and can you place in your will that you want your children to have another guardian mm -hmm. except um Apart Even though her. you'll have a spouse that would be living, like I'd, hopefully I'm I'm phrasing that the right way. Yeah. So 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 the part about guardianship, especially in Jamaican Jamaican context, is you are giving you are making a note so that this this judge will see that you thought about who, in your estimation, would be, you know, in the best interest of the child to protect your child. So you are making re recommendations for guardianship. It's not that there is, it's only confirmed when it's confirmed, right? Okay, okay. Um, so, so, so it's seen as a recommendation? It is, it is. It okay. is it's seen as your request to transfer guardianship. So in the case of two people who are, who are parental rights for a child and tragically they're no longer around and the child is there and they both have wills and each of their wills mirrors the other. So they both have said, if I have minor children upon my death, I would like the first option to be my other, the, the other parent. And if not them, then it's going to be Jane Brown. And both the father's will and the mother's will say Jane Brown. Then when a judge sees that, they're going to have sufficient evidence that these two people wanted Jane what, Brown to have their children. What if it differs, though? In terms of what? 
what if what if one said Jane and the other said John? Oh yeah, what if they don't have um complimenting wheels? Well, mm -hmm. that's an interesting scenario. I'm gonna have to ask somebody who might have had that situation come up in court to hear okay. what has happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that would be a good question to probably you know let me know and I'll post it in in, in the comments yeah, below. Yeah. Next question: Is there any limit to the number of beneficiaries that you can have? No, no, no. A platform allows you to add, 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 add until okay. you're tired. Um, you do. You just need to have things to leave them to. Leave, okay. leave for them. You know. And as All I right. say, it can be as specific as you want or as high level as you want. Okay. Is there any so if I if I assign value to anything at all it can be listed in in the will so if i have a pen that you know it 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 yeah. it has my 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 high school logo i love it and i want to be sure i leave it to you know my my third son can i mm -hmm. can i do that yeah those make for very interesting documents in court i'm sure um, okay. so yeah anything anything that is yours that you um, the, the, the thing is, if it's yours to leave, you can't um, live in a house and um, <laughs> and then you're going to be willing out the furniture. You never buy the furniture. That can't oh, happen. okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So, so once you can prove ownership, then you can yeah. assign that. Okay. Exactly. All right. And the last question that I have, well, I think you might have addressed this already, but do do the witnesses have to see the contents of the will? Mm -hmm. No, your witnesses are witnessing you signing the document okay. and you're witnessing that what that page says that you're doing this without, you know, um, nobody's forcing you to do it. You're, you are in your right mind, you know, things like that, and that they did it at this, part, um, this date and at this place. That's what you're witnessing. So what, what, what typically happens is your will is in staples, right? But their pages are numbered. So you take out the page, you, you, you would have read it before and given us comments or feedback, which is a part of the process. Um, you've read it before, you know what it is, and then you can just extract the signatory page and then that's what you show them and the sign. We've also, we've also allowed you to put initials on each page just as an additional thing. Um, and so you can just like show them the bottom part of each page and the witnesses can put their initials as well. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, cool. Uh, so I, I've definitely learned a lot. Uh, I think we've answered all the questions. I mean, yeah. thank you so much, Andre. I'll ask you though to, you know, just make a, a final, I guess, call for persons to, to really, you know, consider this process and, to, you know, definitely consider it with, with Will and Tomorrow. So, um, Oh, Stephen is asking the story behind why it was started um, as well. So you can just, so, you know, uh, do both in closing. In the, in the closing. All right. So remember I told you that there was um, this, the, I had created a, a coupon. I think it's LGI 15, but it only works if you go on to the, 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 the Stripe checkout, like if you're prepaying for it. Yeah. Um, so we have a way where we can like tweet out that. The link yes, please. As yeah, well as, the, um, as well as the coupon code, so those who are here can actually take advantage of it. So if it's that you're not ready to make your will now, but you want to save fifteen hundred Jamaican dollars or so, you can pay for that before it expires at the end of the month, and then it will give you uh, you you will get an email confirmation that you used to enter when you've actually submitted all of your information. Okay. Um, so I do want to use that as part of, you know, incentivizing people to really consider what we've talked about today. The idea of protecting your investment, a part of this community is understanding how they can take what you, what you can take, what you currently have and turn it into more for the betterment of yourself and your family. And, yeah. um, and it's important to, to not only create wealth and hope that it gets to the right people, but create wealth and do your part to make sure that it gets to the right people, yeah. right? And by creating a will, writing um, out your specific wishes, you are doing your part of making sure that that happens according to your desires. So that's one thing that I'd want to remind people of. 
Um, so Will and Tomorrow got started out of my having um, had a, a close call um, sometime last year, and I was miraculously spared um, from that experience, something that's ex very personal, but it was also like, you know, like real up. It would have, it could have been that I wasn't around to tell this story or to create this thing. So after recovering, I um, I got to work. You know, I took time off. I recovered. I had the support of my family, but I also realized that you know the, the assets that I was building up um, would have fallen under the the, the rules of intestacy, and it would have taken longer. And that's something that we don't talk about as much. How long does it take for assets to be transfer, transferred when there aren't wills in place, you know? Um, we are thinking long-term and thinking about what is going to be our angle when we're going to markets where there's more competition for an online will-making platform. And one of the things that we, we are passionate about talking to is talking to people like us, communities of color, communities that have been, that have had histories of disadvantage and talking about how through um, making an estate plan, you're able to be more sure about the transition of wealth from one generation to the next, and that that should be the thing that gets you to actually make your will know. So, um, so to answer to answer Stuart's question, yeah, I had one of those experiences, and I recommend that I didn't have anything in place, and I thought that working on this project putting my creativity behind it would be a useful thing. It would um, it would stimulate me, it would challenge me, it would give me hopefully a, a decent return. And so um, I've been working on it since um, the latter part of last year. All right, great story. Uh, so, um, okay, cool. So what we'll do typically when we have a guest, we will leave their, their comments in, we'll leave their details in, in the, in the description, you can also go to willandtomorrow.com. You right. can look for Will and Tomorrow on Twitter. That's right. And I see Orville is asking a question here. Orville, why, 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 why are you giving us a question when, when we're about to wrap up? So Orville is asking, um, what do you do when a person making the will has debt and said his estate is empowered to settle all debts? And after hearing what's in the estate, there's nothing substantial, I guess, to clear the debt. <laughs> how, how, how do you treat with that situation? Right. So, yes, Can you so, advise on that, by the way? Or, or that would be I mean, a lot? I mean, I'm not going to advise on it. I'm going to say that your estate is your net worth, right? Your net possessions. Yeah. So they're not going to, not because it's written first that you're leaving your car to your brother. They're going to just take up your car and give it to your brother before they get a comprehensive idea. And by they, I just mean the rules that exist in our country, the laws, of getting a comprehensive idea of, you know, what are your responsibilities and what do you actually own? What is your net estate? So we don't yeah. say net estate, but it really is that, yeah? So to answer your question, um, any any estate that is administered is not going to, is not going to be in a position to honor gifts if there are, liabilities and debts that are there okay okay so pretty much if you if you assign the assets but there is debt whoever owns the asset legally so for example if there's a car loan the bank still owns it it's the bank's property to liquidate you can't yeah. give it to somebody if you have personal debts then based on that arrangement those persons may order that your assets be liquidated to clear the debt if there's none then you know that that is kind of dealt with based on i guess the that particular situation that is you know unfortunately a, a reality for some persons though which is why we encourage you to you know okay. really yeah yeah it, it 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 that would be a very unfortunate situation especially if persons aren't aware that there is debt for this person until you know after they pass so that that's a very yeah. So um, hopefully that answered the question, Orville. If there's any further comments, you definitely post it below and I'll just be sure that, that Andre provides his, his response. If there's a need to get
further insight is as as to what's legally allowed, then we can arrange for another session. Andre yeah. can in invite can his legal advisor. legal advisor. Yeah, yeah. So, so just let us know in the comments if there is enough demand for it, then we'll host that session. Thank you so much, Andre. Really, really do appreciate it. And we'll definitely talk some more. All right. Appreciate it. And thank you to everybody who submitted questions and allowed for this to be a really cool session. I appreciate it. All the best to everybody. All right. Thank you. All right, guys. So thank you so much for being here. Uh, please be sure to join us this Thursday as well. We're going to be going through the Cygnus real estate finance IPO. So if you're interested in that, not sure whether or not it's for you, you want to join us on Thursday, same time. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to going through that. I'm still reading. It is 152 pages, I believe. I'm about halfway there. <laughs> so hopefully I'll finish by the time we get there. So I'll see you in the next one.